there is a certain type of optimization that you can only do when using raw formats. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com and today we're going to be discussing raw. In the old days, it used to cost a lot of money to film in raw. However, now it still costs a lot of money to film in RAW, but it's way less money. In the old days, it used to cost like really a lot. Now, c cameras that are th that can film in RAW are becoming more and more affordable. And this trend will continue into the future, giving the opportunity to more filmmakers, uh, to a larger number of filmmakers to film in RAW. So I'm going to start a mini series where we discuss uh, the RAW formats. Uh, there isn't like one RAW format. Uh, the raw formats, uh, their benefits, what can they do, and uh, how to work with them in Resolve. So um, in this first video, we're going to be discussing raw playback. Raw has this reputation of being extremely hard to playback. That is true. Uh, however, raw formats have a trick up their sleeves. There is a certain kind or type of optimization that you can only do when uh, using raw formats, uh, you know, uh, H.264, 5, uh, ProRes, they don't offer this particular kind of optimization. Uh, and this makes raw formats surprisingly easy to play on any laptop. Let's take a look. So I have this file here. Uh, if I open the properties, you can see it's a Ultra HD file, uh, 4K um, file at 24 frames per second. And here I have a lot of uh, different raw uh, files, raw formats from ARRI, Blackmagic, Red, uh, Canon. So notice something very important. This is not the fastest laptop. Actually, if I go to about this Mac, you'll see that it's a 2017 model, 2.9 gigahertz, uh, 16 gigs of RAM. It, it was pretty powerful for its time, and I think it's, it's still good computer, I mean, but it's still 2017 and it's not the most powerful. And in order to make things more interesting, uh, all the raw files are, I don't know if, it, if the camera's going to focus now, but this is like a pretty regular Samsung uh, T, nine i guess it's called hard drive or it's ssd it offers speeds of like around 500 megabytes per second so it's not like the fastest ssd you can get so let's take a look at initial playback so uh, let's go to the edit page uh, this is a raw file from ARRI. let's play and it's playing at around 20 it says 28 but i doubt this is 28 you can see the playback is pretty choppy let's move to the next one again extremely choppy playback the next one uh, i guess this is a 12 uh, this is a 12k black magic raw so let's start a play and um, because it's black magic raw even though it's 12k it plays nicely that's one of the uh, great things about black magic raw when, when you work in resolve uh let's move to the next one again black magic raw Next, let's move to uh, red R3D play and we're getting around seven frames per second. You get the idea. And let's move finally to Canon and it's the same story. I noticed that uh, scrubbing practically uh, it doesn't really work. <laughs> you can't really, maybe the, the 12K okay because it's black magic, but with the other formats, scrubbing is not really uh, that smooth. Now let's take a look at this special optimization method that is only available for raw files. I'm going to open settings by clicking here. Note that to the left here I have many options. One of them is camera raw. I'll click on camera raw and this is the camera raw dialog. Note something very important. We're not going to be discussing uh, how this, uh, or at least all the options in this dialog. We're only going to be focusing today on the parts that are related that, uh, that allows us to optimize playback. The first dialog here allows you to select what raw profile to work with. Now, take a look at the options at the bottom when I change the camera raw profile. So currently with Alexa, you have these options. However, let's switch to Blackmagic Raw. Note that we have a completely different set of options here. Let's switch to Cinema DNG. The options changed. Let's move to red and the options changed. So. All the options in the dialog changes based on what raw format you're selecting. Because these options are provided by 
the format itself and not by resolve you can think of it this way that's an oversimplification they have to work together but the options simply change from one raw format to the next speaking of resolve if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to use resolve you love our free crash course that will teach you the basics of every tab in resolve simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free now I'm going to select Aria Alexa and notice that the second dialogue here is for the code quality. Now, in order to understand how this works, uh, I'm going to oversimplify raw now, but basically uh, raw formats record all the information that the camera sensor uh, gathered. Okay, uh, the camera sensor senses a lot of light variations and light changes and on different cells and it records this as as a lot of numbers however these numbers are not an image Th these numbers are simply the numbers that are stored that the sensor collected now in order to get an image out of these numbers these numbers need to be interpreted processed um, in, in many different ways in order to get a viewable image out of the numbers that a camera sensor recorded. Now, this is a must. This is not an option. The difference is uh, when you record H, like ProRes, H.264, 5, what happens is that the camera itself, at the time it films everything, it automatically converts all these numbers into an image and it stores the final image. Raw formats do not go through this process. So the camera uh, records all these numbers, but the camera do not convert these numbers into an image. Uh, the camera simply saves this format and that's what we call raw. And this is what this decode quality comes in. Now that Resolve has access to, uh, to all the data that the sensor collected, but the camera did not convert it to an image yet, Resolve has access to the actual data that the sensor collected, at this moment Resolve can actually decode this data and turn it into an image which gives us a huge advantage in terms of playback because take a look at the decode quality option here I'll open the drop down menu and here we have many options we have full resolution resolve full resolution area we'll not be discussing these now but these are the full resolution options next we have half resolution and quarter resolution so what resolve is saying here is listen even though we have a lot of data that was recorded at like, for example, let's think of it like at 2K, for example, or 4K, whatever. Now, when I decode, when I turn this into an image, I will turn it into a low resolution image in order to allow you to uh, play it back in an easier way. This is a huge advantage because now, instead of working with a really large file, you're working with a much smaller file. It's, it's almost like working with a proxy. It's crazy. So now we told Resolve to decode Aria Alexa footage only at a quarter of their resolution. And now I'm going to hit save. Now, let's go back to the ARRI footage we saw in the beginning. So this clip now will be decoded, or the way it's going to be interpreted from the raw data is at a quarter of its original resolution. Let's play and notice that we're getting full playback. Notice the scrubbing, how much easier it is. However, these changes now are only affecting ARRI clips. So ARRI raw clips. If we move to red, for example, so let's move to this file here, play, and we're getting like three, um, eight, four, five maybe frames per second. It doesn't play back in real time at all. So again, I'll open settings, and this time instead of ARRI, I'll select red. These are the options for red. Notice that we have a lot of different options, but the second option is always the code quality. I'll open it. And notice that we have many options, 1 16th good, uh, half resolution, quarter. So let's, for example, go crazy, go to 1 16th resolution. And it also allows you to select the bit depth you're working with. Let's just keep it to 10, save. And notice that now it's like <laughs> the file plays back. It scrubs very easily, um, play back very easily. And this affects all uh, red files. This is great. Uh, However, there's a balance here because 
I'm working from a very small screen. You're probably watching this on YouTube and you're seeing like a small screen. In this case, you'll barely notice a difference. However, sometimes you'll be working from a larger screen and you'll notice that the image looks weird. The solution here is to strike a balance by testing different formats uh, or like uh, options to see which one works best with your screen size and the current format you're working with. So what I'll do is I'll zoom to this image here. Like for example, let's zoom to 100%. Let's turn off the gallery and I'll just come to settings here. And here for, instead of 1 16th, let's try quarter resolution good. Save and the image looks much better now. Notice this is only we switched from 1 16th to quarter of the resolution. And now full frame playback still doesn't play back in real time. Let's play yeah, 7, 19, 24, 20. So maybe we just need to push this a bit more. So I'll just open instead of quarter, I'll select 1 18, 1 8th resolution, save. And it looks a bit pixelated, but not as much as before. Uh, if you zoom in, you can see how pixelated it is. It, it's essentially a lower resolution image, but you can edit raw on your laptop without any issues. I guess that counts for something. So this was red. Now let's move to Canon, for example. So let's come here. This is Canon raw. Again, we can't play it in real time. Open settings, select Canon raw and select quarter resolution, save and now we're playing it back in real time. Again, notice that if you're zoomed in, the image will be pixelated. The pixelation is different from one format to the next. So not all formats will have the same exact level of pixelation or issues. Uh, you know, you can just change the colors, add a bit of contrast and things work much faster on this uh, 2017 laptop. So this is basically how you optimize raw files. Uh, the crazy thing here is that you're, it's like you're generating proxies on the fly. These are lower resolution interpretations of the data that was collected from the sensor. However, there is one more thing to keep in mind. This will be, the image will be exported with this pixelation uh, if you did not revert to full resolution before exporting your file. Uh, actually, I've done, uh, if you go back to my videos, uh, I once uh, exported a video from Canon RAW uh, and, I, and I forgot to switch the, the resolution to higher and uh, the video was published and it has views. Uh, however, it seems nobody noticed for some reason, but you have to always remember to revert back to full resolution uh, before uh, exporting your files. Otherwise, they will be exported at the lower resolution. So this was the first video discussing RAW. Uh, we're going to be discussing RAW more in, in coming uh, episodes, uh, but uh, this is the first video that tackles playback. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, uh, please visit us at filmsimplified.com uh, where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com